Hi YouTube, it's your boy Grassy TV coming at you with another video. Fortnite the Infinite is a free isometric ARPG created by XD Games. I have played a few seasons of this and swiping aside, it is a very smooth and fun ARPG. Today we're going to be reacting and talking about the new season coming October 25th, The Frozen Canvas. The season looks to offer a new hero, some additional in-game content, as well as changes to their monetization structure, which has really been one of the biggest issues for me personally, so I'm really interested to see what they have to say. Let's get into it. Welcome everyone to this Torchlight Hello. Infinite season preview. I'm Andre, your Hi, community Andre. manager. As the Clockwork Ballet comes to a close, we're thrilled to introduce our new season. The Frozen Canvas. The Frozen Bank Account. Sheesh. The Frozen Canvas is our most daring effort to date. And this season, we're doubling down on player-driven development. New season, new game mode, a massive revamp to core game mechanics free heroes, a way to grind out back spirits, and so much more. Great. We deeply appreciate your support and understanding, which have got us all the way here. Got your attention? Let's, Let's jump right it. in. Let's talk about it. Give me the juice. Imagine you had a blank frosty canvas. Oh, what would you paint shit. on it? <laughs> now, better yet, if you could design your own map, what would you design? Oh, no, Welcome dude. to the Frozen Canvas. Meet the Snow Owl, our brand new NPC. Oh, no. If this season is all color-based, I'm literally going to break my keyboard. I am so sick of ARPGs using colors for everything. I'm completely colorblind. It's so goddamn annoying. And I know this is just a me problem. I'm bitching because it's, it's, it's literally just a me problem. But I just, I'm so sick of it, dude. It's so hard who brings the magic of the snowfield to life. In this season, you can collect snow paper fragments from Netherrealm maps. Gather enough fragments and you'll reveal a blank canvas ready for your artistic touch. Mm. But a blank canvas needs paint, right? Wait, Different colors like and types of paint also drop in the Netherrealm. Mm -hmm. Use these paints to bring your masterpiece to life. Feeling overwhelmed? Quick install? Yo, hit, hit the quick install the button. The has a series of objectives to help you unlock different types of paints and understand their power. He'll also help you level up your paints, which is essential for unlocking higher-end rewards in the Frozen Canvas. Once your colorful master... Yeah, 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 make sure, uh, guys, make sure that you buy the seasonal pet so that you can, uh, you can double your doubled rewards. So you can have, like, times 16 and times 32 loot or whatever this shit goes to. Yeah. This is complete. It's and, time and, uh, to step into the, the painting. Yeah, it's literally like a calandra. <laughs> oh, By shit. selecting enter, your masterpiece will come to life as a procedurally generated map. Approach the floating paintballs in the snowfield and watch the scholars transform into real enemies and gameplay challenges. Complete these challenges and the all will reward you with eggs filled with rich rewards. When you upgrade paints to level 6 and 7, red and rainbow respectively, you can obtain a new exclusive support skill from the corresponding okay. rainbow egg. We'll talk more, more about these new exclusive skills in just a little bit. Excited to pick up your brushes and paint a new world? No. To bring your painting skills no. to the next no. level, you'll need to practice your artistry. Hunters can acquire color snow in the frozen canvas maps. <sighs> Consuming color snow improves your... Snow paper fragments uh, dropped have a 10% chance to be replicated one additional time unless you have the pet and then you have a chance for it to double. It is not just a 10% chance. It's like a, it's double that. And yeah, it's, and then you get a, you get a, a chance for additional stats, right? Snow painting artistry, helping you paint more skillfully. As your artistry level increases, you'll accelerate snow paper and paint wonder how long it's going to take us to get to the end of this. How many rows was there? One, this two, three, four, five, six. So it might have been one more up there. So six or seven rows. Now, what if you can unlock the entire thing? And what does this down here do? Yeah, either way, um, my guess is you'll get like additional XPs and stuff too. Like the more juice that you find out of the mechanic, the more XP you get towards it. Drops. Unlock more brush that's strokes, what it was like for richer colors, now and add further complexity to your maps. We can't wait to see what kinds of masterpieces you're going to be creating. So remember. Yeah, let's go back. What was, what did I just see? Level increases, you'll accelerate snow paper. Unlocks the exploration brush strokes. Unlock more brush strokes, richer colors. 
Increase the quantity of colored snow in the clear rewards by 30%. Hmm. Unless you got the pet, then it's 60%. And add further complexity to your maps. We can't wait to see what kinds of masterpieces you're going to be creating. Or double. So remember, That's what it'll be. It'll be double rewards. With us. <laughs> I hate seasonal pets. I think they're absolutely ridiculous. I hate season pets. Such a joke. The new hero? I don't care about your lore at all. Where she sang day and night for an elusive hit the, hit the dreamscape. Skip hit the skip button. It wasn't until she set foot on this land that she truly understood the meaning of her songs. As the first shape-shifting hero in Torchlight Yo, Infinite, shifter. Okay. Selena brings a unique and dynamic playstyle to das the game. Up. When walking on land, Selena can enter the bard state, softly singing in the form of a siren. Wait, it's a, in this it's state, a state? Most of her skills transform into channeled abilities known as bard song. When fully channeled, a beautiful foam wraps around the corresponding skill and floats forward. Additionally, the foam contains the mysterious power of her voice, able to is just me or is she walking along her moving terribly. Path, allowing look her at the way she walks. Or like her movement. It looks dumb. The foam contains look the her go around this. Of her voice, She's like strafing. That's what it is. Along her She's moving strafing. Path, allowing her to move fluidly, ignoring enemy collisions. But that's not all. Selena can also transform her fish tail into a pair of legs. Oh shit. Entering she the allowed song get legs? state. In this state, she trades higher damage for lower movement and, speed and, wings, and reduced attack and cast speed. No. She just gets Here to feet. try out Selena while well, she has one final secret weapon. In the Bard state, Selena can transform all her channel spells, including stationary ones, into moving ones. What's more, she can change direction at will during movement, swimming flexibly to the designated location while walking onto enemies along the way. Selene is definitely a wild addition to our roster, and hey, we can't wait to really see mid. what kind of builds you guys are gonna come up with. Yo, that looked really mid to me. Like, you, you told me she's a shapeshifter. All you did was give her legs. What do you mean? Can she turn into something else? Can she turn into, like, a dolphin or a whale or a shark or a megalodon or, like, anything cool? No, you get, you gave her legs. That's, that's boring. In the bar and we can't wait to see what kind of builds you guys are going to come up with. Next, shape shift skills. You can, give, you can just give her legs. <laughs> the frozen canvas brings a milestone update for the skill system. One that will revolutionize your gameplay experience. Okay. This Good. update overhauls the vast majority of active skills, transforming familiar abilities and breathing new life into lesser known ones. Okay. We've introduced several Transfigure exclusive gyms? support skills for a wide range of active abilities. When you equip these exclusive skills in skill support slot 3 and mm. 5, not only will you see a boost in skill damage, but you'll also experience completely new skill forms and effects, greatly yeah, enriching your combat gems. experience. Curious about these new effects? Let me show you. First up is the exclusive support skill for Split Shot. Split Shot Rapid Advance. Is he channeling? This turns Split Shot into a channel skill, Allowing you to continuously channel split shot while moving, launching automatically you, and do you not have phones? Like next, we have Ground Shaker's exclusive support skill, Wrathful Vault. This transforms mm. Ground Shaker into a jump release skill, changing the former stop and go experience into non stop jumping action. Wow, more auto. And then there's oh, well, look, more auto. It's crazy. Whirling These builds are so build defining and, and so so diverse and creative. Leverage relevant all you do is just hold right click. Every build in this game, all style. you do is hold right click. When equipped with Ring of Blaze strength in numbers, the Ring of Blaze projectiles will be generated on summon minions. Once you build a powerful legion of Ring of Blaze for your minions, now you can. This season, we're planning to roll out over 100 brand new exclusive support skills. That's right, over 100. So if you want all the details, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's for the final patch notes. 
Now, unlike other support skills, I mean, they're, they're, adding, support skills can- they're adding some different interactions and their skills are changing up a little bit. Like at the end of the day, whatever, right? That's that doesn't matter to me. But people enjoy um, a lot of the the auto flightiness of Torchlight. They like where it's, you know, just basically hold one button and just fly through the map, get the loot. Like people enjoy that, right? So if that's what they want, then or if that's what the, you know, the bigger player base enjoys and wants, then I'm for it. Right. I don't personally like that, but can't be obtained directly it is what it is. or leveled up through XP. At, at least from- I should rephrase that. It's not that I don't like that. It's I don't want every single skill in the game just to be that. Right. That's kind of where I'm coming from. I feel like a lot of Torchlight is just channel hold one button. Battles. Run. Instead, you'll need to use precious materials called Inspiration Essence and upgrade using the same name skill. You can acquire exclusive support skills and inspiration essence through the Frozen Canvas gameplay, allowing you to build more powerful, diverse, and creative new builds. So once again, having the pets going to allow you to get more of those. So that's actually going to be a pretty good uh, selling or a pretty good commodity to sell, right? Because there's going to be a lot of people that are going to want to play a specific build, with a specific exclusive support gym, and it's going to like really be build defining. So being able to sell those to players is you're going to make a good amount of money. So even if you're not using the pet, I'm just saying the pet's going to give you more of them. Um, but if you're not like that, just in general, could be a super good money maker. Could be. Depends on the skill. Next up, core gameplay changes. Last season, we made massive changes to our crafting system which open up the doors to, you know, a lot of really creative builds and soaring build strength. However, legendary many of you reported crap. that ongoing seasons of development were leading to an overly complex and convoluted gameplay experience, while at the same time asking for more direct and perceptible gameplay. At the same time, many players were hitting a wall too early in the season, you know, feeling like there's nothing to do once you reach a certain point. The lack of in-game content made the experience feel more short-lived than we hoped no. for. With the addition of con- that's that's not why the game is short-lived. That's actually not it. You know why players feel like your game is short-lived? XD, if you ever watch this, I'm gonna give you some details as to why your game, at least for me personally, it feels so short-lived. It's because I, as a player, don't have to think at all. You literally, I start the game. You, any character I want to play, you give me the skill that I'm going to use through all of leveling. Not only that, you give me a quote unquote POB. You give me the skill tree and tell me exactly what points to take. You tell me exactly what support gems to get. You t- you literally tell me everything. And I understand that um, there's the the importer where people go into max roll or you know different third party places and find build guides or whatever and import those them and they could do the same thing. But I think it's a really bad design and a really bad decision for you as a company to tell me as a player how to play your game, right? Like I should be out there finding different ways to play instead of you just giving me a direct path. Like I just don't think that's smart for a a game developer to tell their players how to play their game, right? That's just my opinion. So anyway, because of that, you're telling me exactly how I can play your game and, and you're telling me exactly how I can be successful without having to think. And on top of that, once I get to level, what is it, eight, 10, something like that, I get the treasure troves. I just go to my treasure trove, get all my legendary gear to absolutely blast all the content. I get over leveled. So once again, I can absolutely blast all the content. I don't have to think. I don't have to do anything, right? (laughs) Now I do all of that until I get to my next treasure trove. You know what I do? I put on more legendary gear and I put on... Uh, I get more levels so that I'm over leveled for all the content. The, all the content is a breeze. It's not a challenge in any way whatsoever, right? That's why it feels like I haven't. There's there's no um, there's no content that I haven't really done anything because I literally haven't, right? So by the time I get all the way to mapping or I get to the Nether Realm, I'm at this. I'm in this position where I haven't done anything leveling was really just a time sink. It was a waste of my time. You could have just given me a character at level 60 or whatever you start at another realm at because all of that stuff before didn't, it didn't do anything. It wasn't like, it wasn't eventful. It wasn't like I was going through the, the campaign and I was 
needing to craft an item or I was finding items on the ground that I could, you know, put different stats on that I needed to use like a crafting bench for. I didn't get lucky and find a unique that did kind of carry me a little bit. I was guaranteed to get all the items that I need. Right. And I know, I know for a lot of people that don't care about leveling, they don't care about the campaign and they, it should feel streamlined. They want to get through it as fast as possible just so they can get to mapping and that sort of thing. So I understand the design there. That's fine. Problem number two, you get to mapping and guess what? You give people their, I call it the Diablo three uh, seasonal journey set, right? If you've ever played Diablo three and you go through the season journey and they give you your, you know, a set to basically blast the entire game with. That's what you're doing, but on a bigger scale, because every item on your character can be a Diablo three legendary set item, right? And it takes it one step further because you can actually upgrade this set as you go through the time mark. So once again, I get to mapping, I have to make zero decisions. All I have to do is just run through maps endlessly, kill the boss, get my set gear, put my set on, continue playing the game. My set will automatically upgrade for me. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to craft. I don't have to find items. I don't have to do a goddamn thing. And it is so, it is so boring. Right. And that's why people get to time mark seven and up to seven, two and feel like, you know, there's nothing to do. Right. Because there wasn't, they didn't do anything. Now, to be fair, to be fair, you don't have to do that. Right. To be fair, the player can make a decision to not follow that structure and to kind of do their own thing. Right. But they're not going to. Nobody ever would in a in an ARPG that has metas and, and is competitive and has an economy and has all of these things. They're never going to choose the latter. Right. Maybe in some situations, if they're playing SSF. Right. And they just want to make it like a hard run, like a no legendary run, stuff like that. Then sure, I could see that. But 95 percent of your player base is always going to do that, which means a lot of them are going to feel like they didn't really achieve anything because they didn't. Right now, once they get to seven, two, sure. At that point, they've got to start looking at different options in terms of crafting, finding other gear, whatever. And realistically, af after that point of seven, two, there isn't any content, right? There's nothing to do. You're just running maps like you were doing all the way up to seven, two or whatever it was. Now, the only difference is, is you're adding in some other modifiers for those maps to give them a little bit more juice and that sort of thing. But I mean, other than that, what is there really in the game? So. You're obviously about to talk about that. So, Anyway, that's my spiel. Continuous addition of new leveling and core mechanics, the damage output of each season shows significant inflation. The training dummy's damage limit even had to be increased from 100 million to 50 trillion. You know, it kind of almost felt like power creeping some cheesy anime. We believe this power creep and stat inflation also diminishes the player's sense of achievement. Yep. We've taken your feedback seriously and reflected on these issues. We need goals that require a reasonable amount of effort while still being fair and easily perceptible. A satisfying growth journey and rich endgame challenges to keep things exciting. So, what have we actually done? Oh, why We've addressed showing my these issues in two ways. One, by overhauling the core leveling mechanics. Okay. And two, by offering better in-game content and better in-game incentives. First, we'll go over the adjustments to the game's core mechanics, focusing on attribute balancing, a crafting rework, and a rework to the hero trade system. Let's talk about attribute balancing. After reviewing data from our previous seasons, analyzing hero builds that broke the game beyond reason, <laughs> and pouring over player feedback, we made some significant changes. We balance the overall availability of various attributes. Rare attributes like aura, curse, and empowerment oh, effects what they mean is their availability reduced across the board. What they mean is is affixes, right? They're saying attributes, but like different affixes, uh, aura effect, curse effect, movement speed, um, probably the candles, right? I don't know if they made changes to the candles where you get, you know, movement speed, area of effect, and those sorts of things on kill. So maybe they made that either more rare or they, they dumbed it down. Um, I find it very interesting, though, that they're talking about these things like skill radius and, um, you know, AOE or effect, all that stuff. When they're playing a class that has a like a <laughs> skill radius that's bigger than the screen. Yeah, we dumbed it down, but you can still get screen wide. 
attributes affecting gameplay or control mechanics. Well, and I think what they're saying is that they made it harder to get, right? So what this is really going to do is it, it's going to create this situation where players that feel slow in the game and don't really get huge damage and like, you know, they're already having like, I, I'm not going to say struggling, but they're just slower players in the game. They're going to be even slower because they're not going to achieve those items anyway. Right. And then you, on the flip side of that, you have people that are very speedy. They make a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. They're going to be supplying that lower end with those items. So the rich is just going to get richer and faster. And the, and the slow people are just going to get slower for a while with the, the middle being like, there'll be some outliers in there of, uh, you know, players that did either learn how to craft or they did buy the items or whatever it may be. So the middle middle part of the player base is going to be very, very small. You're going to have a lot of slow players and a lot of fast players. It's and not going to average out. Movement no speed thing. and skill range are also now rarer. Correspondingly, depends on how rare, increase the basic movement speed and skill get, range to balance the overall game experience. These rarer attributes should now be more precious, ensuring their value more and making precious. the whole process of building a hero feel more gratifying and I think what they're trying to say here is that they're not removing it from the game. They're just making it harder to get those affixes so that whenever you do hit, you know, the big AOE and the movement speed and, you know, all those sorts of things, it, it's more gratifying for you as a player. And that makes sense, right? They don't want you to just craft all your in-game gear super easy. They don't want you to craft your in-game gear as easy as you get treasure droves. Meaningful. We also balance the strengths of different mechanisms such as removing the snapshot mechanism, adjusting attribute conversion damage, and reworking the shock mechanism. These changes aim to reduce certain gaps between overpowered builds and the rest, allowing different equipment affixes to provide a better leveling experience. Okay. Of course, these adjustments involve many details, which you can of course check out in the full patch notes. And hopefully this time around the translation is going to be a little bit better. <laughs> Next. Let's discuss changes to the crafting system. I feel like seasons we I feel like every season they redo the crafting system. This is just me. I feel like every season that they, they overhaul the entire crafting system. Hopefully we'll finally get one that they're happy with. Experimented with various systems, each with its yeah, pros and cons, <laughs> providing us with valuable insights into player behavior and preferences. This That's season, fair. we analyzed crafting data That's and fair. combined it with community feedback to make significant adjustments. We hope to address accumulated issues from multiple seasons and support sustainable development in future seasons. As one of Torchlight's core mechanics, the crafting system should be clear, fair, and easy to understand. It should also serve as a benchmark for everyone, Excuse motivating me. players at every stage of their journey. At the same time, we want equipment and builds to require trade-offs and careful deliberation, not just being a simple ladder of collect the strongest item. When a legendary item drops, hunters should feel its uniqueness, yep. not just see it as a direct upgrade regardless of what they currently have on. Mm -hmm. After careful consideration, we have decided to cancel legendary crafting, Good. make significant adjustments to non-legendary crafting, okay. we reconstructed the affix structure, removed prototype crafting, and adjusted targeting processing, okay. making the crafting process more stable and allowing hunters to customize their ideal equipment step by step. Now here's a detailed look at these changes. We reconstructed the affix structure of non-legendary equipment. Each piece consists of base attributes, base affixes, and random affixes. Base attributes. These are the only attributes bound to the equipment base, determining its base strength. The base. So, so they keep saying attributes, but where I think what they're saying is implicits, right? Every item has an implicit. That's we know that. These attributes yeah, yeah, of yeah. the same equipment position are of the same type, differing only in numerical strength. Base affixes. These are randomly generated when the equipment drops and cannot be modified by crafting. Interesting. So, okay. So you have an item, has it implicit, you drop it. It's going to have, um, random affixes on it. I don't know how many will be like guaranteed there, but whatever it drops with, you can't change those, right? Whatever it drops with, you can't change those. Hmm. Only equipment with an item level of 100, AKA priceless equipment 
can have base affixes, with a maximum of two. Base affixes play a decisive role in determining the value of equipment based material. Yeah, because you, since okay, they removed they removed prototype crafting, so you can't just pick up you know a base off of the ground that has the you know the affix the, the implicit that you want, and then just roll on it until you get a T one. Say say it's a wand, and you roll on it to get T one uh, all skills, right? And then you lock the all skills and you roll on it until you get a second one, and then you sell the base, right? or, you know, however you want to go about that. Now it's, you're going to look at every base individually and you're going to be looking for those, um, you know, one or two affix items that have their T1. Like it's going to make bases much, much, much more expensive and rare. Right. Materials. Random affixes. Similar to the original prefixes and suffixes, the number of random affixes increases with the equipment's item level, with a maximum of three prefixes and three suffixes. We have also streamlined the random affix library, removed difficult to understand affixes, and divided the new random affix library into three levels, okay. entry level, advanced, and ultimate. Each piece of equipment can have a maximum of two advanced affixes and two ultimate affixes. Okay, that makes sense. So you drop an item, that's its implicit. It can get up to two um, random affixes, and then you can target craft two advanced and two ultimate affixes. And it doesn't appear that it matters if they're prefixed or suffixes. So I can click on advanced, right? And I can craft two advanced uh, prefixes. I can click on ultimate. I can do two ultimate suffixes, or I can split them, or however I want to do it. Makes as sense. far as crafting itself goes, we have removed prototype crafting and adjusted targeted processing rules. Now, targeted processing can add an affix to the equipment or replace an existing oh, one. Random. The added affix okay. is selected from the entry level, advanced, and ultimate affix libraries, gotcha. randomly adding an affix from the chosen library with the highest being T1. The higher the selected affix library level, the more crafting actually... materials required also only that's actually kind of poggers because now you're not yeah that's actually kind of poggers because now, now you're not just going against the entire pool right so say on this item here he's trying to hit t1 erosion on it right he can go for that specifically well you know it, it's a much smaller pool he's not fighting between the the harder ones and like the mid-tier ones he's only fighting on the basic ones, which I, I think what we saw there was just basically all resistance anyway. Yeah, like look, he's just fighting against all of the uh, resistances instead of fighting all the resistances and I don't know what else comes on for suffixes. I can't remember, but you know, like all the extra affixes that you get in each of these tiers. So this is actually this is actually poggers. This will make it so that you can um, you can create items that help you early like much easier. In terms of getting like resistances, like like just your your basic items, as well as makes crafting crazy items uh, a bit more streamlined. From the chosen library, with the highest being T1, the higher like the selected affix library level, the more crafting materials required. Also, only priceless equipment can craft ultimate affixes. Finally, uh, knowledge. So you have to get a an item level one hundred, which I imagine comes from like Time Mark Eight, right? To be able to, to get the ultimate affixes. Okay. I mean, that's smart, right? I don't want people in like Time Mark 7 getting crazy gear like that. Their equipment can also be corroded. Players can obtain rotten. It also makes you as a player have to go to T8s. Axes and brilliant axes for Clockwork be Ballet gameplay and use them to corrode non legendary equipment. Corrosion has a chance to turn affixes in the equipment into powerful T0 affixes. But when no T0 affix is obtained after corrosion, the equipment becomes binded. Slamming we rare. hope that so, these yeah. changes can help you. First, better okay, identify dude. valuable base materials. Okay, Second, dude. Make Get the fuck out of here. And easy to <laughs> how many times did you guys do that? All, how many times did you guys record that one? Experience much more okay, enjoyable, dude. clear, and distinct. Next up on our changes is the core gameplay mechanics. Hero traits. Hero traits are the starting point for any build and a crucial mm -hmm. piece of the puzzle when constructing one. As the seasons progress and mechanics pile on, hero builds have become increasingly complex, and according to some players, 
too challenging to understand and manage. Additionally, according to our data, this complexity creep has led to an imbalance between heroes, affecting the richness and variety of the game's meta. This season we're excited to announce that we're streamlining hero traits and hero memories, while maintaining their unique characteristics and playability. We have redesigned all hero traits, significantly reducing their complexity and making them easier to understand. Okay, that's now, good. Yeah, hero, hero traits, traits are complicated. Now, hero traits will consist of a base trait and three traits unlocked with level progression. Additionally, we have removed hero relics and reworked hero memories. Mm. The new hero memories will have trait levels, which can be used to activate hero traits as you level up. The higher the level of hero memories, the stronger the activated hero traits will be. We also redesigned the affix pool of hero memories. Upon okay. dropping, hero memories will have base affixes and one to two random fixed affixes. Okay. These affixes will provide. Wait, that's cool. I don't. I, hero relics are a pain. That's cool. You just find your memory. You install your memory. It unlocks your trait, right? As you upgrade your, we can see the upgrade level right here. So as you upgrade these, and we, they haven't told us how to do that yet. This gets higher. That I don't know if this like directly increases the level, but you, I don't know if you saw in here. Let's go here. Like, yeah, next level. So a bubble flying speed and 5% additional tide effects, 6% additional tide effects. So each level you're getting, you know, these incremental bonuses. So you're, you're upgrading your hero trait as you play, which that's actually kind of cool. Instead of it being just, you know, find your relics and find your memory and put them in and go and you're done. Like it, it gives you something to like progress your character with making them also probably feel a bit more balanced so that, some characters, whenever they first get their hero trait, they're not just like brokenly gone because you know they're they're in a max effect state. If that makes sense, this will provide stable, regular stats without complex mechanics. Okay. Furthermore, hero memories can now be strengthened. Hunters can consume memory scraps to enhance hero memories, okay. so as you improving get their base affix values. Hero memories of different rarities will have different enhancement level upper limits. When memories are strengthened to a specific level, they will consume memory threads, adding additional random affixes and even increasing the trait level of the memories. Memory threads can be obtained by dismantling hero memories of the same rarity. Okay. These changes aim to balance the strength Ooh, differences. Now it's important to know of the same rarity. So if you have like a giga memory, right? You have to deconstruct ones of that rarity in order to upgrade it. It's important to know. You can't just like use these like base white ones to get, I don't know what color that is. <laughs> I don't know what color that is. Blue, purple, pink, I don't know, red. Between heroes, smoothing out players learning curve and make it clear for everyone to draw out their own playstyle. We believe these improvements will help players make more defined and well-informed choices throughout their gameplay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Next really. up, end game sure content. Really. After significant adjustments to our core mechanics, it was time to address the other elephant in the room: end game content. Oh shit, and he's endgame happy. Incentives. Look at him. So, how does yeah. this actually? He's so excited together? to talk about this we right now. Our new end game challenge. Supreme Showdown. Okay. The Supreme Showdown features 20 boss challenges with new map mechanics and extremely high difficulty. Only players who can balance both offense and survivability will be able to defeat these bosses one by one and etch their names on the leaderboard. Making it through the Supreme Wait, Showdown he's means that if true. Wait, he's cheating. He has he has a hundred and one thousand life. Really mastered the torchlight season. Of course, we're not going to make you grind in-game content for nothing. I mean, why would you? After completing all of these challenges, players can choose one of the legendary drop pack spirits from past seasons, including Heart Binding Rose, Monument Knight, Shepherd, or Mid- Once obtained, it can be used in your inventory to choose one of the available drop pack spirits. Okay. So they're giving everybody a legendary drop pack spirit by after you complete that? Okay, so here's how I feel on this one. Yes, like I'm happy that they're giving everybody the legendary drop pack. That's great. The problem is, <laughs> the problem is, 
once a free to play player has a legendary drop pack, especially a seasonal based one, they're going to see how strong these packs are uh, on the seasons, right? They're going to like, they've had people tell them that, oh, it's, you know, it's just a minuscule difference between the regular one and the legendary one. And that's so far from the truth. The legendary pack spirits are broken for these seasonal mechanics and more like some of them just enable them. Like the dark surge one literally enables dark surge. So I think, <laughs> I think for the free to play player, what this is ultimately going to do is, is show them how strong these seasonal pets are so that whenever the new season starts, guess what? Guess what? They're going to swipe that bitch. Yep. Cause they're going to want that seasonal pet because they know how strong it is now. I think people have told them like there's this, there's this, um, this rolling idea. And I don't know if this came down from the whales or like where this all started from, but there's this, um, this rolling idea and this like general knowledge that people will tell other people that, that the legendary pack spir spirits have a very minuscule difference compared to the non-legendary ones. That it's, it's basically, it's not worth it at all. That's like a 1% difference in drop is what I've heard people say. Actually, you heard them say 1% difference. So I think this is XD's way of realizing that people have this, uh, this idea that they're not that different. So why pay for them? Right? So now they're going to show you how different they really are. It's real orphan. It On top of that, again, I do enjoy. I do like the fact that they are still giving those free to play players uh, options, right? They are still giving them a free legendary pack spirit, regardless. And if you play every season, you're going to get a bunch of them, right? But they're never going to give you all of them anyway, right? <laughs> it's not like you're going to grind every legendary pack spirit out. That's not going to happen. But at least they're giving you something um, to feel like you're somewhat in line with the whales. Each upcoming season, the Supreme Showdown. And it's not even really whales, right? Even just getting the the seasonal pack spirit every season, that's not whaling, right? I think the the pity system on that's like two fifty or three hundred dollars, which I know that that's like a decent amount of money, but that's not whale amounts of money, right? Balance mechanics will be updated and its rewards will be reset, so you don't want to miss out. Next is a brand new daily boss challenge, boss conquest. Players will face the reawakened Golden Havoc or Drac. Each challenge has a 3 minute time limit, and you're allowed 3 revives. Within this time limit, you must inflict as much damage as possible on Ordrak. As Ordrak suffers more damage, his level will increase, becoming stronger and gaining new skills with each level upgrade. When the challenge time ends or you've used up all your revive attempts, rewards will be calculated based on Ordrak's current level. For each level successfully challenged, okay. you will receive corresponding milestone rewards. Cool. Good. Yeah. Additionally, Log daily login. each sure. first daily challenge will offer its own reward. We hope that these challenges provide a richer endgame experience and truly reward players for their mastery over each. I mean, it depends on how tough this stuff is, because the thing is. <laughs> the thing is, is, is it's a daily reward, right? So because it's a daily reward, they they're either balancing it to a point where they don't expect you to be able to hit this every single time or they're balancing it to where you're going to hit this like fairly easy at some point and all you're doing is logging in for a daily reward right this isn't in-game content at that point to me right if if it, if i can hit level 300 by the end of like day 2 of a season this isn't in-game content it's a waste of time right I mean, I shouldn't say it's a waste of time. You're getting free shit out of it, but it's not in-game content. It's daily. It's just log in, grab your shit, and get out content. Season. We also believe that making patch I don't know the answer. grindable is an important step in addressing community feedback and making Torchlight appealing to an even broader audience. The Frozen Canvas also brings some exciting changes to the Nether Realm. Following the introduction of new endgame challenges, we've also made some crucial adjustments to the Nether Realm's high time marks. Last season, we realized that advancing to higher time marks in the Nether Realm didn't actually yield more attractive rewards, giving players little motivation to engage with them. In the new uh -huh. season, we've taken your feedback into account and readjusted the high time marks in the Nether Realm. We've removed time marks A3 
an 8th floor and introduced profound time mark 8. We have also brought back a redesigned deep space. These will offer a greater challenge but also much more generous rewards to players. Okay, to motivate good. you to progress to higher time marks, we've increased the drop differences between high time marks, ensuring that higher difficulty levels come with more substantial rewards, making for a more profitable mapping experience. Okay. Profound Time Mark 8 is an advanced version of the really original Time Mark 8, but it uses the same Time Mark 8 beacons sound of the Clockwork Ballet. Clockwork Ballet, went for I don't hate campus, that. Season we've mechanics, added a limit so to the maximum time, time game <laughs> during the Clockwork Ballet gameplay. Confusion they were card actually rework. maxed out, making the process of gathering them feel a bit dull to some. To address this, we've adjusted confusion cards to always be effective after being selected. Furthermore, their hmm. effects will last for four stages. Additionally, we've redesigned all confusion cards to ensure they provide a more dynamic battle experience and varied drops, avoiding okay. a monotonous experience in each single round. Previously, players often found that the confusion cards they drew were irrelevant to their current mapping strategy, True. making the cards feel worthless and significantly reducing their effectiveness. To solve this, we've separated certain gameplay-related confusion cards. Now, players need to actively light up nodes on the void chart to add the corresponding confusion cards to the random pool. Adding these confusion cards to the card pool will be linked to some medium talent nodes. Okay. Will not so, I mean, you can essentially, yeah, they, they're tuning it so that you can try to target you know, specifically things that you want to target on the nether realm, which, you know, good. Claps. That's all fine and dandy. Void chart, uh, Chard. Void chard. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe it's called the chard. I actually don't know. <laughs> maybe it's called the chard. Um, what do we got here? What do we got here? Next up, clear goals and progression. In the past, Players were expected to go through the Nether Realm and the Path of the Brave with little, if any, guidance. This season, we are introducing a brand new, clearly delineated system. The Path of Progression offers a plethora of objectives and challenges. By completing these objectives, okay. you can learn hands on. Cool. So they they reworked the Path of the Progression system, which I've used it before. Like I remember, we would log into it and you get all your your juice from it. Um, but now it's just you know they've reworked it to give you more stuff. Right. So, I mean, that's cool. I have nothing against that. Free shit for completing the game. Claps. Next up, quality of life updates. We made sure to include as much as possible of your most requested features into this season's development. Let's quickly go over them. UI optimization. The mobile version now features a customizable Yay. button UI, allowing you to adjust the button size, position, and transparency to your liking. Additionally, most non-combat UI elements can be hidden, giving you the freedom to select the layout that best suits your gameplay. The Trade House now has a search history feature, saving several recent advanced search records Good. to help you replicate search criteria and obtain desired items yeah, more conveniently. That's good. That's good. We've optimized the Trade House interface for PC, increased information density to make searching more efficient and convenient. A one-click delete feature for transaction records right, has UI been added, for the so you trade no longer have better. to delete records manually. Affix library, What's up with the library gear, not legendary affixes and abilities, uh, you making can, it easier to. You can search affixes on uh, like gear and see like what has certain things. Cool. Build your own build. Eterna leveling. Eterna has also been optimized. After each completion of the City of Eterna, you will now unlock 10 floors rather than 5. Wow. Adjustments to the size of Eterna, Eterna make enjoyer? all talent nodes visible, moving nodes that unlock area quantity and upper floor limits to the start area. The node to unlock the upper floor limit now has one level, allowing direct unlocking up to 2,000 floors. The three orange nodes that reduced dungeon difficulty and had an upper limit of 50 levels have been removed. Twin Reflection Optimization. I really like the turn up. Turn up is my favorite season so far by far. House, players can choose Twin Reflection and set Ooh. the handling fee. The Twin Reflection item can... Did they add this in last season? The Reflection? 
So you can mirror items just through the trade house. So you can put up a, a reflection handling fee price. Wait, 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 wait. How does that work? You have to have like a reflection item. I was going to say, how does that work? Handling fee? Cannot be purchased, That's only it. replicated. When removed from the trade house, the item will be sent back to the hunter's inventory. By paying one twin reflection and the corresponding handling fee, the buyer can obtain a replicated twin reflection item. Mm, okay, cool. That's huge. That's actually really cool. This season, our monetization system is receiving some bombastic changes. Okay, First talk up, to me. Heroes. This season, you will be able to play all previous heroes for free. This season, we're featuring the Hero Gathering event, allowing all heroes, except for Selena, to be unlocked for all players. So if you haven't checked out any of our heroes before, come dive yeah, come, in. Come do it now, chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you haven't um, <laughs> if you haven't checked out some of these characters that are, you know, buy, buy to play ones, come check them out this season so that next season, you know, which ones that you should buy. I mean, I understand what they're doing here. They're trying to get you to buy characters, which I, that I don't care about. Like monetization to get you to buy a character is like whatever, right? The, this is all optional. You don't have to buy them. You can play everything in the game just the same. There are some classes that are obviously stronger than you pay money, but you could argue that some of the free to play classes are, are just as strong, right? Like just as strong is such a hard thing to say because there's so many different combinations and skills and like, yeah, it, it, none of that really matters. At the end of the day, there's all these different classes. They realize that a lot of their player base is probably playing on these on the free to play characters because they are fairly strong. And why would you play something else? So now they're opening it up and saying, "Hey, come, you know, we have a decent player base now. Come check out some of these other classes that are also really fun and really strong, and really cool to get them to buy those." Right? There's something wrong with that. There's honestly, there's literally nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's actually a really cool way for them to basically give a free trial for their characters so that people know like, Oh, I thought about playing like a different version of Carino. And now I know that I don't want to, because I just, I didn't like that hero trait, but I really enjoyed, um, uh, I forgot her name, flame girl, flame Gemma. Right. So yeah, kudos to them. That's cool. And check yeah, that's, out. That's not roster. negative at all. Next up, a season pass. It's a, it's a, that's a healthy way for them to generate money without, you know, being cheese Lords. Without being predatory. We've made significant changes to the season pass, upgrading its benefits and optimizing the experience of leveling up. The rewards have been revamped, with the hunter supply box replaced by a torch supply box containing jagged prints and torchlight badges. So here's the thing, when, when it comes to battle passes, I don't care. This is all this is all up to the player to decide if they want to buy this because it's generally like cosmetics. You get some extra stuff in here. Like you pay for whatever is in the battle pass and then there's nothing really, there's nothing really pay to win about the battle pass except for level 10 right here. This guy, this is the advanced auto loot, right? Or somewhere in here is the advanced auto loot. So personally, I cannot play torchlight without this. It is way too good. It's just it, at the end of the day, it's just way too good to play the game without it. I've tried without it. I'm like, bro, I'm clicking so much more stuff. Like the amount of time that you spend clicking compared to like just spending the twenty dollars or whatever it is to have this, it's 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 almost mandatory. It's not mandatory. You don't have to buy it, but it's it basically is mandatory if you ever want to, um, you know, be efficient in the game, right? Especially in a, in a trade game and an economy based game that's all about efficiency. Yeah, you're gonna spend the money now. To be fair, you if you buy the new class, right? I think the new with the battle pass, it's like twenty bucks with the new class. It's really not that big of a deal, right? That's really not that big of a deal. It's just that that advanced auto loot thing that gets me. The rest of the uh, the battle pass, who cares, right? You're getting cosmetics, you're getting some primo Chris, you get some you know, some orbs of a regret that you never use, right? So who cares? And a resource supply they box more stuff containing elixirs of oblivion and revival to tokens. Buy. Torchlight badges can be exchanged for past season pass appearances in the past store. Or for so past whatever whatever can be traded in for past season pass um, appearances. 
So if there was like appearance things that you didn't get from the past, you could exchange ones now for the previous ones. That's cool, right? For extremely priceless appearance crystals. Yeah. Season pass quests are now open all at once, removing daily quests yeah, because you earn together. Right, because of this, because it's a quest based thing, you earn those things. It's not like you're directly paying for um you're not directly paying. So because I'm pretty sure like the, there's the golden pass where you get the extra stuff and you probably get more of them maybe. But imagine in the free one, they may give you like one free cosmetic through the whole thing or whatever. And if you pay for the main one that you pay for, maybe you get a couple extra. But either way, it, even for the free version, you are just leveling through their battle pass and they're giving you free shit for it. Like, I could care less about that. Now, only need to level up to 50 to receive all the grand prizes. With every level up effort wars, granting a lucky loot bag, which has a chance to contain an appearance crystal ultimate. The monthly pass has been replaced with the Hunter's Fund, which better fits Torchlight's game design. After unlocking the fund, players can obtain jagged criminal crystal rewards along with their game progress greatly shortening the time span required to claim all rewards. We've made clear classifications for the boon pool, making it easier for players to choose their corners. Pick a uh, designated pack spirit, enjoy 20% off on the, on the 10 X draws. So you get 20% off. So they're not, uh, 50% <laughs> chance to obtain the pack spirit you picked upon attaining a legendary pack spirit. One pack spirit you picked is is guaranteed for every two legendary pack spirits obtained. Hmm. So they didn't make it. They, they didn't change the legendary pack spirits and the pack spirits that are just OP and give you crazy drops and just all that sort of shit, right? The pay to win. They didn't fix that. They just made it cheaper to get them. Spawning boons. Ish. The glory across all realms boon has been optimized. Adding rewards, progress for the lottery, allowing players. Oh, what just happened there? Oh, he clicked the thing. Uh, also, I don't really care about appearance stuff, right? I don't like the gotcha for appearance. I think that's stupid. I just want to buy stuff and own it and be done with it. But to unlock rewards, I mean, appearance by appearance, accumulating appears. a certain number of rewards. You can do whatever they want in terms of monetization for cosmetics. New legendary pack spirits. Rainbow Paint Owl. Of course. The season exclusive drop pack. Show wait, wait, wait. Before we look at it, it's going to be. Uh, it's a season specific one. So it's going to, like. It's going to multiply your loot. It's going to multiply the multipliers and. Uh, it's, yeah, that's Add that's a few going strokes with. to your paintings, turning them into her exclusive set. Increased drop quantity, bare hand. Oh, we can't. They don't hover over it, so we don't see. Yeah, we, we can't see. But that's my guess. So he said more brush strokes. So it's going to like make your your canvas bigger, right? As well as I'm sure there's some other shit in there. Cells. In these cells, players can get double rewards there it is. without needing to battle. Yep, there it is. You don't even need to battle. Bonding. She provides channel skill damage bonuses and channel stacks caps. Increases attack, cast speed, channel damage, and movement speed. So all of the like aura effect and the movement speed that they took away. From, uh, you know, the rare affixes, they just added it into this pack spirit. While causing nearby enemies to enter a weakened state. We're also introducing a series of new cosmetics. Let's take a quick look at them. I don't care about this. Is that it? Yeah, that's Bye. it. Okay. That's going to be everything, boys. Um, overall, if I were to rate this out of a 10, I would give it... Okay, like a six. That's going to wrap up the video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.